you know, when I took a break uh, from broadcasting for 16 years and I was managing an old camera shop in, in Tacoma, Washington. And, you know, the building went back to like around the 1870s. Originally, it was a hotel, brothel. Uh, the basement, it was a bar. But, you know, in, I think in the late 60s, you know, they, they had to take off about like, I think it was like five or six stories off the building to make it safe. So they actually took it down to a four-story building from probably, it was probably about a 10-story building originally. And, uh, you know, I would go up there because upstairs at the uh, top floor, you know, that was like where the rooms were. And, you know, the rooms weren't there. The walls were taken down, but there was like all the different color linoleums on the floor because that's what they oh, used yeah. instead of carpet. And it was really awesome. And I like taking pictures. And the, the old windows, you know, naturally they were bricked up, but they were still there. The old window frames. And, you know, I was in there, you know, just taking pictures because it was so cool. And all of a sudden, now, the, the the main retail space was the hotel lobby originally, you know, back in the 1870s and, and 1900s and, you know, 1920s. Yes. And it was a four-story drop. And I stepped and I went through the floor. Now, the only thing that saved me, it was my arms. And here... Right, and you... And you could almost pull your shoulder out of joint. I got you. Yeah. Well, I, I figure a four story drop on, you know, and the the floor in the uh, uh, the store had thin carpet on it, but underneath it was cement flooring. So you figure you drop four stories straight down. Either you're going to be broke up really bad or you're going to be dead, especially because there was tripods underneath it and all this other stuff. So most likely I would have been impaled. You know, I, I I remember hanging there for a little while before somebody realized, hey, this guy's hanging from the ceiling, and they called up the you know the fire department, the paramedics. They all came out. They were scared oh to even come up to me, you know, oh, because they wow. thought they could fall through the the floor. So they, I remember they they were crawling on their stomachs, you know, to to get me, and they managed to pull me out before I dropped. And I I tell you, that's why you got to be freaking careful when you go out in these old buildings and old houses and stuff like that, especially in an old house or somewhere out somewhere where there, you know, it might be awesome for ghost hunting or, you know, taking pictures. But if you fall through a floor, which you could, if the house has been vacant long enough, that who's going to help you? I mean, you know, if you fall and break your legs, what are you going to do? How are you going to crawl out of there? How are you going to get help? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. How are you going to get out of there? <laughs> and it, it, Good point. And there's so many of these ghost hunters I've talked to, you know, they, they do, some of them sneak around, you know, old vacant buildings and go in without asking permission, which, they, again, the rule of thumb, you ask permission to go in and let people know where you're at. Because if something happens to you, you're, you you know, you're, you're good as dead. And is it worth it just to go out ghost hunting or, or get pictures or infrared or whatever you're doing? It's not. And, you know, another thing, uh, there's all kind of rusty stuff. You could uh, cut yourself, uh, get uh, infections. Another thing, you could cut yourself and uh, rip an artery or something, and you could bleed out before you get the help, get help if you're, you know, far enough out there. And, you know, another thing that people don't realize, there's so much black mold and fungus and, and asbestos, like that steel mill is full. All the pipings was wrapped with that asbestos. There's a lot of dangers out there. And the thing is, especially asbestos, it, it might not hit you today, but 30 years from now, it, it could get you. You know, there's a lot of dangers out there. And, uh, yeah, definitely don't go by yourself. I, not at all. I don't recommend that. Well, I can honestly tell you there was a lot of, you know, uh, uh, you know, where they used to build the ships, especially, you know, World War II, you know, all the way up to the early 60s. And they used uh, asbestos. And, and all these workers, you know, like 10, 15, 20 years later, they were coming down with lung cancer and dying from it. Absolutely, because what happens, all it takes is one one little minute, uh, so micro small you can't really see it, excuse me, uh, piece of that asbestos. And, and the problem with them, they're shaped like a hook. And so when you breathe them in, they, they, they lodge in your lungs, and then next thing you know, years down the road, you've got cancer from it. And that's why it, it was been outlawed and stuff. But, you know, there could be just one of them hooks getting your lung, and you can't even see them, and, and you're doomed. 
And all of them ships and even all the old factories, all the old buildings, all their piping was wrapped with that stuff. And a lot of people don't even realize it's asbestos. This looks, it looks like uh, insulation, but it's actually asbestos wrap. Oh, yeah. I remember, you know, uh, one of my friends uh, when I was back, oh, probably in junior high school, they had an old house and it, it dated in Seattle, probably well, late 1890s and stuff. And, and you know, in the basement, you know, on some of the ducking, even down there, it, it was um, uh, wrapped in asbestos, you know, uh, to, you know, keep it, uh, you know, from you know, losing the heat uh, on the heat uh, pipes. So, I mean, y- y- you think about all that stuff, and it, I thank God they realized what it did and, and took it off. But that's the type of risk. It's not even that. I mean, you don't know. I mean, I've talked to people who have gone out ghost hunting way out somewhere, right? Out in old ghost towns, for example, like in Nevada and stuff like that. Again, you got to be careful, not just because of that, because if something happens to you, no one's going to find you. But there's other elements of people out there you got to be careful about. Uh, yeah, I've come across where, I don't know, vagrants or homeless people have been in place. Now, you want to talk about, you know, there, there's two different kinds of scared. There's being scared, and then there's being spook scared. <laughs> if you're, you're investigating something, and, and there's not supposed to be nobody in there, and you come around a corner, and, you know, you, there's... You know, there's nobody there. But then you see a person, you don't know, if, is that a spirit? Is it a person? You get really spooked. And then you don't know, you know, what is this person? Are they a bad person? Are they a good person? Am I going to sit around and ask them to have a little tea? What's going on? You know, it's, that's, that's quite an experience right there, too. Yeah, especially if they come up there and greet you with a machete. Yeah, that usually doesn't uh, end too well, <laughs> Usually that's when you start running like Forrest Gump. <laughs> now, uh, you know, we were talking on the show one time back. You went out in, like, the woods. Oh, and, yeah. And you ran into a group of people that were not barbecuing, but they had, I think, a goat, you were saying, or something. They had a fire going, and they had robes, and they were chanting. Uh, yeah, you know, Gary, I still have nightmares about that once in a while. Yeah, that was, it was, actually, it was, uh, it was Halloween night, 1988, and uh, it was the same year I investigated Bear Hack. Actually, Bear Hack, I investigated right after that, but uh, I think, yeah, a week or two after I investigated Bear Hack. But anyway, I had a, a friend that lived on the East Coast, and, and um, he lived there all his life, and I used him like a scout, you know what I mean? He wasn't investigating nothing, but he knew all the local legend and the lores and the local haunts that you don't hear about. You know, that's the places I wanted to go, not not these places that everybody goes to. I want to go to places that nobody went to. So he told me about this woods uh, in uh, Rhode Island, and I said, oh, this sounds good, you know. And he gave me directions. He didn't say much about it, and, and he acted kind of weird. So I, I said, oh, whatever, you know. So I go out there. I figure I'll go out there around midnight. So I get out there in this woods, and it's a dirt road out in the middle of nowhere in the woods. And I park. And there's a little lake there, and uh, I rec- kind of recognize the place because I, you know, I fished it a couple times. It's kind of a big lake, but anyway, so I I follow directions. I get out, park my truck, and I go up through the woods, and it, off in the distance I can hear noises. And then like, you know, when you look, if you're going up a hill, and if somebody's on the other side of the hill and got a fire going, you know how you can see like light flickering, but you can't see the fire yet. And that's kind of what I was seeing, and I'm hearing like noise, but I couldn't tell what it was. So when I get close to the peak of this hill, so now I'm kind of like getting in my stealthy mode, like my, I don't know, I call it my ranger mode. I'm down on all fours and I'm crawling very stealthy, you know what I mean? Because I don't know what I'm coming up on. I, you know, I don't know. So I get up over this log and I, I, you know, I'm peeking my head up and yeah, there was, I, 12 or 13 of them, they've got these cloaks on and they're, they're dancing, chanting around a fire and they got a goat, uh, tied to this pole, this post, and there's a bench there, and there's a, you know, pretty good fire going on, and, and I'm thinking, <laughs> this, this is something that's not right here, I'm thinking, uh, you know, who am I to be rude, and, you know, break in, and, and ruin these people's barbecue, is what I'm thinking, I'm like, so, I very slowly duck my head down, I, I, Gary, I'm going to tell you something, the hair on my back of my neck stood up when I seen all these things, you know, I couldn't make it out two ways. I was probably about 40, 50 yards away, but I, was, I didn't want to be no closer, let me tell you. 
it just didn't look right. On Halloween night, uh, close to midnight, there's a goat tied to a pole. There's a bench there. I could see a knife on the bench. People's all dressed alike, and they're dancing around and singing around a bonfire. So I'm like, no, I'm getting out of here. So I slowly got I slowly left there and come to find out, and I didn't find this out till actually about three, four years ago, that area was the area where supposedly the, the conjuring was made, where the witches and the, are supposed to be haunted woods there and stuff, and there's still a lot of witches there, but back then, 30 years ago, there was a lot of, there was a lot of cult stuff going on over there, and it was killing. There were some people that was killing and stuff all the way from, like, Fall River into Rhode Island. They was killing people, and people would come up missing, and there was cults and things. But I didn't even know all that then. I put all these pieces together years later, and I was like, what was I doing out there? My God. I was like, wow. You were it, brave. It blew my mind. Very okay. brave. Very brave. Because, you know, when I first started, my very first job in a radio station was in Battleground, Washington. And, you know, uh, it was supposed to be top 40. Well, I went in there and they said, no, it's gonna, we're now news talk. I, I picked the paranormal. But, you know, what was interesting in that area, there was a cult in that area. A lot of hitchhikers over a period of time just vanished, you know, with no trace. And, you know, it, it took a couple years, but they busted this, uh, you know, a cult because, you know, People's animals, dogs, goats, all disappeared, and then people were disappearing. And then they found out that they actually sacrificed a few humans. And so, I mean, you got to be careful when you go out, and, and you know, you never know what you're going to run into. Right, and you know, it's funny you say that because that same scenario was going on on the East Coast, and they were targeting uh, homeless people, uh, prostitutes, or runaways, or um, hitchhikers, like you said, because it's hard to trace. And that's what they were targeting. But, I, you know, it wasn't like all over the news, and I didn't know much about it then, but years later I found out about it. But that's some scary stuff. And who knows what's going on out there? I mean, you got to be careful. My advice is don't go on Halloween night by yourself, growing up in the woods, uh, looking at a bonfire, people <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Just don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's not safe, you know. But you got to be careful when you uh, do that. Now, you had another experience where you actually captured a image of somebody that was departed. Yeah, you want to go into that, and you know, and go ahead and take about five six minutes and explain it all, what leads up to it, and how it happened, and what you were doing before you even took the picture. I got a few of those, but. Uh, the last one, actually, it was um, just this last all, or October. I was uh, um, in this town. There's a lot of haunted places in this town. And it was on this ghost walk. I was called in to help, you know, uh, help on this ghost walk. I said, okay. And there was a lot of stuff there. I seen a few things. So at the end of the night, in the cemetery, it's supposed to be haunted with a uh, groundskeeper who died in the 1800s. Well, anyway, I'm you know, there's nobody in this place. There's a group of people behind me, but the night's over, and they're, they're all going home. So in front of me, there's a building, and it's in the cemetery, and I can, and there's a tree, and I'm looking, and I can see this spirit of this guy kind of peeking out. You know, peek out, he put his head back, peek out, and I'm like, that's a spirit of a guy. I'm like, that, I know it is. So I kind of walked up there, and I just asked. I said, can I take your picture? And if I can, please just, you know, walk on. Let me take your picture if it's okay with you. So I took the picture. Now, here's the thing. I, I've done this several times. And, you know, you they might let you take the picture. They might not. And then even when they do let you take the picture, sometimes it, don't, it, it doesn't show up. It just won't show up. Anyway, I didn't think nothing of it. I go home, and I look at the picture, and sure enough, bam, he, it's right there in the picture. I was amazed. I was blown away by it. And... and I, I'm still blown away by, by it. Now, also, uh, last August, I was investigating this place in a uh, state park down by the river. And it's got a lot of history. I mean, a lot of history. Indians and soldiers and Indians fight Indians and settlers and you name it. It's just a lot of stuff. So I'm in this old abandoned building, and I can sense and see and feel spirits at times. And I can see... Oh, I think five of them in a corner. It's kind of like cowering in a corner. They, they, were, they were more scared of me than I was of them. You know, they, they were kind of shy. And I could see them. And, and I told the two people with me, I said, over there in that corner, 
you know, take two pictures in a row, always take two, maybe three pictures in a row.